Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see a man on his eighth NFL team, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and the Miami Dolphins as they take on last year's number one overall pick, Baker Mayfield, and the upstart, Cleveland Browns. So with that, let's get up to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland for the call. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years, have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the Miami Dolphins. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis on hand. And Charles, we've got two teams here, certainly with something to prove after a disappointing 2017. Let's be honest about it. Their playoff aspirations, they went splat, didn't they? They've got to prove now to themselves and to their fans, are they one of those teams that's ready to move back up, or are they one of those teams that really has to rebuild? Here's the former Sooner, Austin Seibert, to get this one started. And off we go from Cleveland. This one taken from the seven. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Miami Dolphins taking over for the first time, and at this point in the season, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick under center. And guess who has the longest winning streak in the AFC East? It's the Miami Dolphins. Two games in a row led by Ryan Fitzpatrick for the year, eight touchdowns, eight interceptions. We may not see many more 400-yard games from Fitzmagic, but we're seeing a load of inspiration, and his team's coming along for the ride. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Time to feature the offensive starters and our first chance to get a look at Parker. Devontae Parker came out of Louisville with a guy who was known as a mature receiver. Runs routes really well, but the best part of his game, he'll jump over you at the end of a route and go get the football. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Let's go, defense. Here's Fitzpatrick. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 16 yards, a first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, up. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. This taken in by Jakeem Grant. And he's got this down to the 35. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing Fitzpatrick. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. They'll run here with Balazs. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. When you're the number one overall pick in the NFL draft of 2017, puts a little extra scrutiny. Defensive end Miles Garrett is certainly used to it. In 2018, came into his own his second year in the league with 13 and a half sacks, 
and really expects to increase that total in years to come. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home, yo. Play action now, Fitzpatrick. And that will be incomplete. TJ Carey right there in coverage. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This will be from 56 yards out. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. A first down throw for Mayfield. Got a man, that's Rashard Higgins. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. First down. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Set, 180. Come on, the ball, come on. On first and 10, Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now the third leading rusher among rookies last year, it's Nick Chubb. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. They go play action. Mayfield going for it all. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that's to be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. They'll run with Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0.
So the drive there took six plays. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. the touchdown. Here's Seibert now to kick it off. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take this one near the 25. Call it the 26-yard line. Miami's offense coming back out here. Uh, break up the Dolphins, CD. I mean, it's second straight win. And now 2-7 and seven following the win in Indianapolis in Week 10. Well, they won't throw them a parade for these two wins, but still, how great do they feel right now? And let's face it, if you're going to have Ryan Fitzpatrick as your quarterback, you're not going to have a team that's just going to give up games easily. They've come a long way from a group that lost 59-10 to and 43 to nothing to start the season. Now they're home against Buffalo. Then they go to Cleveland. Before, they were relying on faith, which is belief without evidence. Now with these two wins... They're starting to believe they can win these games. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. To throw Fitzpatrick. And this is caught. It's Parker. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Mike. 180. 53. Mike. Mike. Don't get nervous. <laughs> Fitzpatrick on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Devontae Parker, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. All right, that one felt incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. The big tight end, Clive Walford, the intended target. And that'll make it third down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. On third down, Fitzpatrick. And a throw there going to be incomplete. That makes them now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. On fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Landry the intended target, but it'll be second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Mayfield with a quick fire to Landry. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. 
Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have <laughs> been a different been a story. Long night. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Mayfield on play action. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Mayfield and his Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. Third and long for Mayfield. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Christian Wilkins providing a little deja vu. Back-to-back -back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay. price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. Fielded at about the 28. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. From the 38, Fitzpatrick. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Fitzpatrick on third and two. They're able to locate Wilson. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Wilson now in his second season in Miami. First four years were in Kansas City. He's always been a solid complimentary receiver, but Miami really hoping he can take the next step in his development, be more of a go-to guy now at 27 years of age. This quarterback now... Six of ten in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. Toss play to Balage. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And finally down at the 32-yard line. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that, the nickel look. Five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little, 
and oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Balazs, and the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. The previous play went to the offense with a nice run, but that last play we just saw certainly went to the defense. So you're keeping a little bit of a ledger there, aren't you? Tally. You know, somebody wins, someone loses, but you get the sense offensively. They're continuing to probe around, trying to find the runs that are going to work, and then they'll go to them consistently. This is Gaskin on the carry. You ain't doing nothing, baby. You ain't doing nothing, baby. You got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They don't need to run another play here before the two minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On third down, Fitzpatrick. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. that coming up at halftime we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman he's in Orlando and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report to throw is Fitzpatrick this one into the hands of the running back Balage. and he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11 it's a four yard pickup and that'll make this a second down everyone's got to be able to catch the football doesn't matter what position you play but if you're on offense be aware, a ball may come your way. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. On the delay, it's Balazs. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. On third and two, Fitzpatrick. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. The kick by Sanders is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 40. 
Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Fitzpatrick on the right side open is Gasicki. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. This quarterback now hitting on two-thirds of his passes, 10 for 15 so far, first and 10. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Fitzpatrick, the old war horse, getting everybody up to the line quickly. Now on second and 13, Fitzpatrick. Denzel Ward right there in coverage to get the hand in. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches have told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. My and likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. Final play of the half, Fitzpatrick. He's going to let one go deep for Parker. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Mitchell. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Let's go, boys. Let's go. There's Baker Mayfield as he and the Browns offense comes back out. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, you want to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there. First down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Mayfield to the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 45-yard line. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. The safety, Rashad Jones, brings him down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping... Those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And again, it's Chubb. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Well, at that rate, picking up three yards of carry, you and I both know that doesn't cut it in this league in trying to get first downs unless you're playing four-down football. Then that's a whole different situation, but I don't think that's what they're trying to do here. Third and four, though, is still manageable. Set the tone, defense. Set the tone, defense. Let's go. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 26. All right, let's just go and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Mayfield now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. A run for Nick Chubb. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Second and five now. Mayfield over the middle, and it's incomplete. Kareem Hunt is running back, the intended receiver, and it's third and five. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. 
Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Mayfield now five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. That's complete to his tight end, Seals Jones. And he's gonna be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Going to the air again with Mayfield. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Demetrius Harris, the intended target, and it's third and short. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Mayfield with it once more. And he'll find his tight end, Seals Jones. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. So on fourth down, out comes the Browns kicker, Austin Seibert. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Seibert's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to three. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13 play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there, but here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes, you don't take the ball away, maybe that's the way they should look at it. to the made field goal. Seibert back out there to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, Fitzpatrick. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Larry Ogunjobi in for the sack. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. 
third and long for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. Then he's going to lose yardage here, back to his own 18. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to make it fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's taken to the 26. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point <laughs> kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bashed it. Super tough. <laughs> they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're just going to pick up a holding call. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. They go with Chubb on second down. Give me some. Give me some. And on the stop defensively, Raekwon McMillan. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Browns on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Charles, thinking back to what you said in the first quarter, that part of the magic elixir for a road victory for these underdogs was going to be winning the turnover battle. Well, they only have one right now. Look at the scoreboard. Yeah, not exactly playing to the form that I subscribed, right? When you talk about winning that turnover battle, that evens things out, especially for a road team, especially for a team that's an underdog. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked. And down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. The number one pick, Miles Garrett, coming in to drop him. You never want to give up a sack. And from the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they left little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Here's Fitzpatrick. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. The Dolphins on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. Now Fitzpatrick, he's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. 
Certainly not what they wanted there. No gain, and it's fourth down. They dialed up the blitz on third down, and your worry is a defense that they can hit you with a big play in that situation. Instead, the blitz pays off, able to rally to the football and make the play. Here's Matt Hawk now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it and again get those first downs keep possession of the football eight yards the gain on that last run here's second and a couple they run it again with chubb and they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield 11 yards there first down but they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. It's brought in by Harris. I know sometimes we can get forward when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll show the defense. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. A first down throw for Mayfield. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Christian Wilkins picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go.
this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause of the action. A timeout here defensively. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. They'll look to throw. And he finds Parker here, complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Uh, he's been quiet all afternoon. He may have just come up with a play of the day right there, though. Obviously, it's not the volume in which you get done. It's the quality, and that was a quality catch right there. You look to throw. Caught. It's Wilson. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain. And we've reached the one-minute mark in this game. Here's Fitzpatrick. And this is Parker, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. All right, they picked up yardage, but they've got to get up to the line of scrimmage and spike it. They've got one timeout left. Want to save it. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Miles Garrett in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back Let's after the go. sack. Second and 19. 53 to 53. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. Back-to-back -back big plays defensively. First the sack. Now they force the incompletion on third and long. Things looking pretty good for him. And this is where they have to be careful because they've got the momentum going their way. They will be really amped up to get to the quarterback. Look out. Draw, screen, something that can be used against them. Now the throw on third down. Knocked away and incomplete. T.J. Carey right there in coverage. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Now Fitzpatrick on fourth down. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Browns are going to get this thing back. Excellent field position. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old.
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.